Hello there, welcome to our Bible study. We're in deep in 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 34, with only two chapters after this. My wife is like, when are you going to finish 2 Chronicles? And I'm like, we're getting there, we're getting there. <laughs> but uh, We are going to talk about King Josiah today, who I always mix up with King Joash. There are some similarities, but also significant differences. And if you want the informational PDF, you can download it on our website for free. As always, we now have hundreds of these out on the website, and so go get some. Josiah reigned over the southern kingdom of Judah for 31 years, estimated dates for his reign, 640 to 609 BC. Key characters today, we have Josiah, the king of Judah. We have Hilkiah. Hilkiah was the high priest who helped Josiah with several repairs on the temple, and he did many other things as well, uh, as he was the high priest and had many duties. Shaphan. Shaphan was the secretary to the king, and he reads Josiah the Book of the Law, which we'll talk about in our outline. And then Huldah. Huldah's an interesting person. She is a woman prophetess who Josiah's men go to inquire of, to inquire of the Lord. Now we go over to our map, and of course we have to go to Jerusalem, because otherwise we would be lost. Jerusalem's the capital of Judah, but we're also going to talk about the region of Judah and even the region or the remnant of Israel. Josiah purged Judah of idolatry, and his reforms extended to the north to what used to be the kingdom of Israel. Remember, they had been destroyed and taken captive by the Assyrians in 721 BC, about 100 years before Josiah, but there were still some of God's people in that area, and Josiah's reforms extend up north to them. Okay, so now hop over to page number two to our outline. We have one, two, three, four sections today. The first one, verses one through seven, Josiah becomes king in Judah. The reason I always get Josiah and Joash mixed up is because they both become king almost at the same age. I think Joash was seven, right? Josiah is eight when he becomes king, and he reigns for 31 years. The text says, quote, He did what was right in the eyes of the Lord and walked in the ways of David his father, and he did not turn aside to the right hand or to the left. While he was a teenager, he began seeking the Lord, and then not many years after that, he began purging Judah and Israel of idolatry because he realized that it shouldn't be part of his kingdom. He also tore down many of the altars uh, in the places dedicated to, to false worship. He did this, as I mentioned, not only in Judah, but in some of the northern tribes. The specific ones that are mentioned are Manasseh, Ephraim, Simeon, and Naphtali, which you can see over on the map. Section number dose. Verses 8 through 21, the book of the law is rediscovered. In the 18th year of Josiah's reign, he decided that he needed to restore the temple because once again, because of the wickedness of the people, because they didn't care about worshiping God, the temple had fallen into neglect and uh, it, it needed repairs. So Josiah gave, uh, Josiah's men gave money to Hilkiah, who was the high priest, the guy who was supposed to be pretty much in charge of the temple. And he used that money to pay workmen to begin these repairs. As the men were working, Hilkiah found the book of the law in the temple. And this was a great discovery because this book contained God's laws for his people. It was God's spiritual and civil law for his people, the people of Israel and Judah. But God's people had been so wicked in the past that they, haven't, they hadn't even bothered to keep track of this thing. They just didn't care that much, apparently. And so it has to be essentially rediscovered by Hilkiah. Hilkiah gives the book to a guy named Shaphan, the secretary, and he took it to King Josiah and he read it to Josiah. And when Josiah heard what God expected of his people, seemingly for the first time in his life, he tore his clothes because he didn't, he, it seems like he just, it was a revelation to him to realize just how badly his people had failed to do the things that, that God expected of them. Josiah feared that the curses that were pronounced in the book of the law would come upon his people, the curses that were promised to come if the people didn't follow God's law. To figure out what to do and what would happen to his people, Josiah sends some men to inquire of Huldah the prophetess, verses 22 through 23. So Huldah lived at Jerusalem. She was a prophetess, and Josiah sent Hilkiah and some other men to speak with her. And she told Josiah's men that, yes, God was, in fact, angry with his people because of their, their neglect of his instructions, and yes, he would punish them. Their love for idols and their love for immorality would bring about the curses that were found in the book of the law, but there was kind of some good news. I guess it was good news for the the, the present people, and that was that 
the punishment wasn't going to come until after Josiah's reign because jo uh, God recognized that Josiah was trying to do the right thing when he was king. And so the punishment would be delayed until after his death. And then as we close the chapter in verses 30 through 33, the book of the law is taught to the people of Judah. So Josiah gathered the men of Judah in Jerusalem and he read them the book of the law so everyone would know it and at least have some familiarity with it. And the people made a promise there that they would do their best to try to follow God's instructions. That's where I will leave you today. That is chapter 34, but first we must do our application section. So as I mentioned, Josiah was shocked when he discovered what was written in God's book, and he seemed unaware of just how badly his people had failed to keep God's instructions. He didn't know about God's anger and his wrath that was coming on the nation because the people who lived before Josiah hadn't even bothered to locate the book, much less read it and study it. Unfortunately, there's going to be people who find themselves in equal shock on the last day, on the day of judgment, when they learn about what God expects from his creation, from, from people, from human beings. They will be shocked because they never took the time, they never could be bothered for whatever reason to, to look up, to find, to locate God's book, his instructions within their lifetime. The way to avoid that shock and to avoid the anger and the wrath of God is to seek out his revelation, what he's told to men, what he expects from us, his words. And obviously we believe that that is contained in the scriptures, in the Bible. If we know those words, we can direct our lives accordingly, like Josiah was directing his nation. If we can never be bothered to locate God's book during our lifetime, if we never put in the effort to do it, we're going to end up in trouble in the end.